plan and layout of this cafe pavilion. We've currently got a staircase that goes from the ground up to first and then up onto the roof. So apart from a staircase, we probably want some other type of access as well. We probably want some more general access or disabled access to be able to get up. Also, in terms of the design, this is gonna be a cafe, so we need to have some type of a kitchen or kitchenette, and we need to have some amenities. And in terms of the design, it's gonna take away from some of the design quality if that's taking place on the lower floor, on the ground floor. So what we'll do is we're gonna keep the ground floor very open, so that can be as the main cafe proper, that's the restaurant if you like, and then we're going to put more of the facilities on the first floor. So to do that, it's definitely now important that we have something like an elevator. So we're going to add that in, and we'll have a look at what Archicad provides with us rather than just drawing that in a standard type of way. So we'll go to the library, go into the library settings, and we could type in lift, see if it finds anything for us. Of course, the problem is that lift is a very Australian word for what we're talking about. And a more standard term for that is an elevator. So let's click on this one. It's not giving us many other options. Let's place that here. We see it's quite big and we'll go into the settings and then see what's possible. So if we go into the elevator settings. We can see that there's a variety of different ways in which we can adjust this. So the form is rectangular. We have mechanical or hydraulic. Where, where is the counterweight position? So is it the rear or the left side or the right side? Direction of se second opening. So do we need a second opening? So is it one-sided? Is it front to back? Is it front and side? So we've got a few different options, and of course we can change the shape of that as well. And while elevators tend to have some standardized sizes, it's partly also dependent on what function it's serving, whether it needs to be done for goods, or whether it's just for passengers, how big is the building that it's serving, is it residential versus commercial? So there's a lot of different options, and we don't need to get cut, or sorry, we don't need to get caught up in working too much of that out now. What we're going to do is go right click, show as trace reference, and so we can understand the relationship between the elevator and the staircase. So I currently have a small gap, which would be nice to place this elevator, which is in the relationship between the bottom of this stair and this other stair here, but it's not very wide. I only have a meter, that's more like 1500. And of course I have these beams to consider as well. So I need to consider, is that gonna be big enough or do I need to move it somewhere else? Could I move my elevator into the, the middle of this space or is that gonna be too awkward? Or do I need to move it somewhere else entirely different? So in this case, let's stick it in the corner. So rather than making this courtyard a little bit complicated, let's put it over here away from where the stairs are. We want to ro rotate this so it's mostly facing, I think I didn't do that very well. Let's do that again. So it's mostly facing back into the space. I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but that angle looks a bit weird to me. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's a bit better. And so that's, a little bit smaller. We can actually change the size manually like this we can see. I'm gonna move this into the corner. I wanna stay away from the beams if I can help it. And we're going to make the area of the lift two meters by two meters or thereabouts. So we'll fit that within these beams. Oh, that's a bit strange. Let's go into the settings. We'll make this deeper, make that 1500. Yeah, there we go. So that's a, a better sort of shape. Now we could house this out with something. So we could put uh, a solid wall around this or we could put glass walls around this. At the moment, we're just going to keep that fairly simple.
So technically that's the inside face. We'll flip that around. And for now, I'm just gonna keep that really small. So we'll just make that 20 millimeters, suggesting it's just basically a piece of glass. And we could of course continue that around on the inside as well. Suggesting there's a, a big glass box that wraps around the whole thing. Now I'll group all these walls together to keep it simple. At the moment, this is not linked, so this wall is only 300 high. That's not really good. I want to link this to the first floor, and I'll make that zero, which means it starts at the ground and goes up to the, the top of the next story. Now, that's maybe technically not right, but we'll come back and adjust that later. And for now, I want to represent that to be glass. I'll then copy this and place it on the next story. I can also add in some type of door. We have, of course, the elevated door. The question is, do we need a separate door here? So we can do that. Uh, we can come back and do that later. We can copy this wall up onto the first floor. And of course, we could copy it up onto the roof as well if we wanted to. Now, technically we don't need this elevator to go, sorry, we don't need multiple copies of this. We can just have it going through multiple stories. So I'm gonna change this to all stories or all relevant stories. And that means at the moment it can be seen on the ground floor just turn the trace reference off. And it can be seen on the first floor as well, but not in a great level of detail. Now I can of course choose to show the elevator shaft and so I could create the elevator shaft this way rather than doing it with walls. I can change the way that the doors work. And we'll adjust that a bit more later. So we've got our elevator. Now therefore, when we go up to the first floor, I need to decide what's the area in which I'm going to build this out. Now the reason why I've chosen this bottom left corner is because north in this case is up the page, which means left, uh, left is west, down is south. And so in terms of having a corner that is more built out, that works better for us because that's not where the sun comes from. So ideal light is coming from the north, uh, Second preferable orientation for sun is to the east where the sun is rising. And then often we'll want to block out sun on the west and we just don't tend to get a lot of sun to the north. So that works out a good way, a good place, I should say, for where the elevator is going to be positioned. And more importantly, because that's where the rest of our space is going to be positioned. So I can then extend this living area slab, this slab floor level. Now this could technically be an outside slab, the way that it's working. So what we're going to do is pick up the settings and create a new slab in relationship to it. In this case, I want the slab to go to the outside of my beam. I need to create a void around the staircase. It doesn't matter if I actually went over it slightly in terms of head height. And again, I wanna to go to the outside. Now here I could extend this up, so that's encapsulating here. Uh, I could also technically bring this short, but I like the idea that I have a connection from where the elevator is out to this staircase. So I could extend that up if I wanted to, just to match. I don't think we'll need to make it as big though, so we may end up chopping this back a little bit later. So let's have a look at what that looks like at the moment. 
So we've added our elevator shaft. We've just done that with walls. I'm gonna to try to steer away from using more of the commercial Archicad methods. So we're not going to use curtain walls at the moment. Uh, we've only been learning residential construction methods at the moment, and you'll be looking at commercial construction methods later on. So we're just gonna stick with more of the simple tools within Archicad. So this is where our first floor slab is. Now in terms of its height, that's currently at zero. So technically, if I want this slab to be an outdoor slab, maybe I need to make it set slightly down. So maybe minus 50 or minus 100 in terms of the relation, <laughs> not 500, in terms of the relationship between these slabs. Of course, that would mean I need to change my stair relationship as well, but we can fine tune that later as we go. I then need to start adding in all of the extra elements. So remember, this is the south, this is the north. So in the on the ground floor, what are we gonna have? Basically, it's just going to be seating areas. In order to represent this, we're gonna to go to the library parts. We'll go to furnishings and we want furniture layouts. I'm just going to use table settings so we can have a, a rectangular table. I'm just gonna place it at the moment and we can have some round tables and we can have some seating arrangements as well. That's all that we're going to use in terms of this space. Now these are probably, sometimes they're a bit too big, sometimes they're a bit too small. So we can make some of these a little bit larger. We can make some of these a bit smaller. We can move the chair relationship between the table. And we can make, so let's just adjust that one too. And then we can make some very small tables. Let's turn those ones off. And adjust that so it's a table for two. So we've got a few different uh, table chair arrangements. Now we're going to have a combination of all of these throughout the space. So we can have the, the larger tables down here, let's say. As a general rule, what I'm going to try to do is to have the, the glazing aligned with the inside of the column. That's not a, a fantastic way of doing it, to be honest. I probably want it to be slightly stepped more than that. So I'll deselect that for a second. And I at least want that to sit in line with these columns. And then we could effectively continue this all the way through the project. And for now, we're just gonna keep it really simple. So we'll just make our walls out of glass and then we'll add in beams and doors as we need to. So we're not gonna worry about windows in this case, or at least uh, not worry about fixed windows. If we wanna add in some other type of window, uh, in this case, we might add some louver windows in, we can do that. And once I regroup that, I can then regroup all of those walls. The idea was also to have some glazing in the middle of this stair. Now I'll do this the other way around. So in this case, I want the glazing to be on the inside of the column. which is making that outside space a little bit larger. So 
Let's have a look back at that in 3D. Again, gist of what's going on. There's not a lot of transparency in that window, or there's none. So let's go view, 3D view options, 3D projection settings. Sorry, that was the wrong place. 3D styles. We have transparency turned on, so we, we need to see that in order to see transparency, maybe it's a problem with the actual surface. So if I select the wall, what we're talking about here is AD glass. If I go options, element attributes, surfaces, then we see that transparency is very low or, or non-existent. So I'm just going to increase that transparency. I want to keep attenuation high as well because that'll look good. Uh, and I'm not going to make transparency 100%. I'll leave that at 85. And now we can see through the glass more, uh, but we can still see that the glass is there. Now it's a question of whether I want the glass to be blue or clear or, or whatever, but at the moment it's nice just to have it a little bit blue and that just helps us to identify that there is glass present. So we'll go back to our ground floor. Uh, we'll just copy this to keep it nice and fast and simple. Oh, sorry, I'll group these together first. Select group. Copy this. Of course, I extended the lift shaft. So we will go paste and basically replace all of that. And so we can now see that we've got glass over the whole story, or whole, whole two stories, I should say. Now the idea of these spaces is that there will be inside and outside dining. So we can have some dining out here on this space. And we're effectively designing the amount of people that can use it based on the size of the building available. So I, I can then multiply that to make that a bit faster. And if I'm not sure, I can paste one. Figure out the spacing of that roughly. So let's say 2400 or 2200, move. Multiply, spread, let's make that 2200. See how many I can fit in. So that worked out pretty well. And so we could copy that all the way around. We could play with some of the layouts a little bit. So I'm probably gonna alternate between areas for seating. In this case, we'll put the lounge against the corner. And then we'll have a bit more seating next to it. <laughs> Something's a bit funky with this, my ability to rotate at the moment. I think I've been placing everything on a slight angle. It's hard to remember that these beams don't actually exist on this story, so I'm, I'm trying to avoid them, but then realizing that it doesn't matter. All right, so I'll have a bit more of a play with this. Uh, I want you to do the same. Start to populate your cafe space with chairs and tables or whatever else you want to be in your cafe, and then we'll have a look at a bit more of a resolved layout and, and start to arrange some other things based on that.